What's up guys, I'm Matt Reisinger. And I'm Jake Bruton. And on the Build Show today, we are talking blower doors again. Now last episode, we gave you the basics, why you'd want to do it, but on today's episode, Jake and I are gonna do some experimentation on my house. We're gonna show you the blower door score we're at today before we're really completed. And we're gonna play with it. We're gonna drill some holes in the air barrier and we're gonna show you uh, like a real world, this is how much the air barrier is leaking to get to X. Today's build show all about air leakage and blower doors. Well, let's get going. All right, so we're gonna do some real-time testing on the blower door, and to do that, I don't have a piece of glass in yet on this back door, so Jake came up with this idea. What are we doing here, Jake? We are gonna poke some holes in it, and we're gonna measure in CFM what each one of these holes that we drill in this, and the beauty of this is that we, in real-time, can see what a three-quarter diameter hole does to our envelope. What, Inch two, three-quarter, yeah. Inch and a half. Uh, you know, however many holes it takes to get to a certain CFM, and then we can equate that to this is what we're trying to track down. Right, uh, nice. I've done this before and the pro tip is uh, drill them from the outside because if you drill them from the inside when you're depressurizing all that sawdust goes right in your <laughs> right face. In your face. So, all right, let's do it. Okay, so now we, are, we have our meter adjusted so that we're getting uh, CFM. So that's cubic feet per minute of air moving through the envelope. Right now we're leaking at a rate of 954. So let's drill three one inch, one and a half inch holes and see what that does. All right, Andrew, drill some holes, brother. All right, so we drilled three inch and a half holes in a uh, back door that's missing its glazing for now. And uh, we got basically 30 CFM. So we're getting at that volume, you know, 10 CFM per inch and a half hole. The interesting thing is not every hole leaks the same amount of CFM, so it's not simple math to be like, oh, well, if it's double that, it's gonna leak. Let's drill like a three and a half inch diameter hole or a three inch hole and see what that does. Okay, sounds good. Andrew, give me a big hole. So one more three and a half inch diameter hole took us like another 50 CFM, uh, which is a big jump. Yeah. Now let's cover those over and go back to ACH 50 and see what happens when we crack one of the windows. All right, I like it, sounds good. Let's open this. This is a European tilt turn. Oh my gosh, feel all that air flowing in. Goodness gracious, you can see my wall. My paper is just flying on the walls here. That's a massive leakage right there, Jake. All right, let's go see. So we were at like 1.6, 1.7. Let's open the window and go see what it did now. Change the air changes per hour. Oh my gosh, look at that. Just shy of three ACH 50, which is code most places in America. So we would have passed code with a window open. With a window open. Which means, why are we having that conversation about how difficult it is to get to that point? Yep. But also the amount of air that's moving through there that your house is allowed to leak is per a lot. code is a lot, is a, a huge of lack I mean, of control. I can just feel it blowing all the way around there. And think about if that's spread over the entire envelope, you don't necessarily feel it, but it's the same number. Yep. I'm gonna stop it just so we can talk. So a couple takeaways I would say, Jake. First of all, my house without my finished air barrier, 1.7 ACH 50, not as low as I would have liked, but this attached garage and the way my garage is attached is not frankly ideal. At your well, it's house- It's not finished yet either. It's not finished yet. At your house, I saw you sheath that with zip sheathing and then tape it so you could really tighten it down. And then your electrical on your house was all applied later with yep. conduit, right? All conduit underneath. Basically, we're treating the envelope as one box and everything that's outside the envelope gets applied after the fact. So yeah. zip sheathing runs all through there. Yep. And then we just put garage doors and another wall on. And in my case, I've got this kind of continuous space. This is the wall between my house and my garage. So my garage is right on the other side of this wall. I used zip sheathing in the wall and taped it, and I'm taped to the floor on the inside, but on the outside, this band joist area is pretty leaky, even though I've wood blocked it. 
it's got a fair amount of airflow. I'm curious whether there's much difference between spray foaming that versus putting zip sheathing and taping it. And I actually have a couple froth packs. I wonder if tonight or tomorrow I do a little froth packing, see if we can get that lower. Uh, but the other thing, the other takeaway too, is you got to really think about how many operable windows and doors you have in your house. When we walked around, we, fair, we saw some leakage uh, around the operable windows. Uh, the fixed windows, really no airflow through those fixed windows and doors. So the more fixed you are, the better off, right? Yeah, uh, and if you look at your climate, how often are your windows open? Almost never. There's very few, almost zero days a year that I want my windows open. Because even if the temperature is okay out there, usually the humidity is high. Yep. Any other takeaways from this that, uh, that you can think of, Jake? Closing that window, you know, metaphorically on your envelope, increases your control. Huge. And it's all about getting control. And the people who say, your houses are too tight, you're killing people. No, even the tightest houses, even code build houses that you have a blower door test, frankly, are pretty darn leaky and could as much have as, as much as two windows open, right? Uh, like this example over here, we went from 1.67 to 3 by opening a window. So houses are not too tight. Most of the time, houses are too leaky and they need to be tightened. All right, guys, it's been a day or two since Jake left, and I was honestly a little disappointed with my number. We were around 1.5, 1.6 ACH 50, but this right here, I had a feeling was a pretty big culprit. We didn't do any real air tightness measures between the house and the garage where my floor system was. So what I did was I had my buddy uh, who owns a, a rig from DAP come in. It's basically a froth pack type system with closed cell foam. And we sprayed this area at the top of the wall that separates the garage from the uh, kitchen area. And then also we sprayed a few kind of detail areas in the garage ceiling because I've got second floor above my garage, which is never ideal from an air ceiling perspective. We're gonna run the blower door again and let's see what we dropped uh, on this house. And then my, um, my secret weapon is I have the arrow barrier guys on schedule, but let's see where we end up with those measures that I just took. This is a RetroTech machine, which is really nice because it's actually gonna calculate everything for me. I've entered in ahead of time on this machine what my volume of my house is. We're about 34,000 cubic feet of volume on my entire enclosed envelope, including my attics and everything. And the fan's ramping up now. And this is the pressure differential between the inside and the outside and we're sucking air out of the house. And uh, we're kind of normalizing here. We're equalizing right around negative five zero. That's negative 50 Pascals. Uh, and with that volume calculation, this RetroTech is showing me that we're just shy of one ACH 50. 0 0.98, 0 0.99, maybe 1.0, somewhere in that range. So that was a significant leak in my house. But what this is telling me is that even with all of my other air tightness measures, I have some other leakage going on. And I've already pre-taped my windows. Uh, any operable window has been taped in the house, so I'm not getting any leakage from operable windows. So these are places that maybe I had my electrician or my plumber drill and I didn't realize it. Maybe I have some air leakage around um, bottom plates or other areas. So I'm much happier with this number but as a builder, I am a little disappointed because I was going for passive house certification on this house. And I thought that with all these measures I was taking, I was gonna get there um, on my own and I'm not. It's time to call on the Calvary. But I think the point of this video was to show you that a blower door as a builder during construction can be a really handy device so that I can really see what I'm doing and honestly, in my 15 years uh, of building here in Austin as a custom builder, I've done a lot of things over the years to kind of tighten down my houses. And as I've done that, a lot of times I'm disappointed that I didn't have bigger jumps. Frankly, this jump here is one of the biggest jumps uh, you're gonna get in terms of air tightness. But I've done lots of things between spray foam cans and caulking and all kinds of stuff. And this number is good, this is great. We want our houses to be below one ACH 50 across the US. That's a great number. But I was looking to be even tighter than that to make a passive house certification. So stay tuned for a future video. We're gonna be doing some aero barrier over here. If you're not familiar with them, 
total game changer technology. I met them three years ago at IBS and they have some cool tech. So guys, if you're not currently a Build Show subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on the Build Show.